Now welcome to another lightning response video where this time the question comes to us from Vedrilit Torf who asked Hey Thor, I've been reading a lot of EU works and it disappoints me knowing that some great characters like Jaden Kor and Maricia Fell don't have a proper conclusion of their arcs. I don't think it's likely that Lucaswim will continue the EU entirely, but what do you think of at least the unfinished stories getting a proper end? Do you think hashtags might be able to convince Lucasfilm to do that, like how fans convinced Warner Brothers to release the Snyder Cut of Justice League? Alright, so to my knowledge, I don't think there's ever really been any big sort of organized effort to try and revive or save the EU, or to at least get some closure to certain stories or characters that were left open-ended or unfinished when Lucasfilm decided to pull the plug which they did shortly after being purchased by Disney, with of course the promise of a new, more organized canon and all that to take its place. Either that or did happen or has happened at certain points and never really made any major waves, or at least not enough for me to have heard about, which seems kind of unlikely, but who knows, I certainly do not see in here at all when it comes to Star Wars, but I do try. Anyway, that said, I don't really know that they'd ever bring back or restart the EU unless the fans could indeed make a hell of a lot of noise and make them think or fully believe, I should say, that it would truly be worth the time and effort and money for them to do it. I mean, we're now closing in on a decade since it ended, and again, there's never really been any kind of major effort to bring it back or even a hint or a whisper from Lucasfilm that they'd ever consider it if one was made. To them, the EU is probably something that's essentially dead and gone and has been replaced fully by their new canon, and it's something to only have tidbits of it borrowed from by the few creators they have around these days, or that they hire, who actually know it and care about it, which doesn't seem to be many of them. Though, all that said, it is interesting to point out that, yes, many EU books continue to be reprinted and sold. You can still go into a bookstore today and find plenty of them with the Legends banner on it, and more and more are being reprinted all the time. Which kind of implies they still sell decently, right? Or at the very least, well enough that they're profitable enough for them to, you know, go through the effort or spend the money on publishing them again. In other words, they must be making some money off the EU or they wouldn't do it. And, in an odd sort of way, the disappointment some fans have had with Disney Star Wars in general has shed quite a bit of light on the EU in recent years. Maybe even, in a way, more light or attention is on it now than there ever was while it was still going strong. I mean, I get tons of comments all the time, or emails, or messages, asking for my thoughts about it, or from someone who wants to get into it, where they should start, or how they even begin, or they'll tell me they just started reading this or that, and they're loving it so far. And so in this strange way, it almost seems to be known more to Star Wars fans in general these days than back then, or just how expansive it is is better known or understood by them. I think there was a time, not so long ago, when many fans or people in general didn't really fully understand what the EU even was, or that it was even a thing, or should I say a major thing. They probably thought it was just a couple books here and there, when it's actually, you could say, its own living, breathing Star Wars universe with a vast, vast and rich history and plenty of stories to be had. And one that, as I was just saying, many fans are only now discovering thanks to their disappointment in the Disney canon. In other words, there just might be an audience, a hungry audience, for an EU revival. But I don't know if Lucasfilm really cares all that much or is paying all that much attention especially if book sales on EU stuff is just good enough to make it worthwhile to keep reprinting and not something to really sit up and take notice of or that they're really profiting off of. Plus, they do really seem to favor their own canon, even though only a small fraction of the fan base actually reads all the new books and comics, or even some of them, or even cares about them, which then means, since virtually no one keeps up with it, that they're going to be far more reluctant to do anything kind of major or important in the books and comics, anything galaxy-shattering that you have to know about or that would be kind of required reading for the bigger picture. So instead they often do kind of silly gimmicks like Han Solo once was supposedly married or they try to fake you out by getting you to believe somehow Padme has returned in the Vader comic books or they tease that Shakti and Aya Sakura are still alive. That's been their most recent one that they've tried to get attention with, though, to be fair, comic books always kind of do these sort of things. Either way, all these gimmicks and a lack of true importance to the books and comics, in turn, oftentimes makes them a less than exciting read because nothing's really happening in them. And so you get to the point where you start to wonder, why do you keep reading them when they clearly are sort of side quests or side stories at best? 
and especially when you consider the films or shows rarely take anything from them into account, or that they're not afraid to simply retcon them if they want to, making it almost feel like a separate timeline or universe from the main stuff anyway, from the films and shows, when then again nothing exciting tends to happen in. And they're certainly, on average, far, far less exciting than EU stories where the books and comics were essentially the main story or where everything major happened in because there weren't a continuous wave of new shows and movies coming out that they had to not only behold in themselves to, but couldn't outshine, if you will, or again make themselves too important or too necessary to read for the bigger picture. And so when you really stop and think about or consider all that, you begin to wonder if it would actually make more sense to stop making new canon books and comics or to make far fewer of them and have them just come out here and there and be a little more relevant when they do come out to make them feel a little more special. And to instead just bring back the EU fully, which is its own separate timeline, which means they don't have to worry about it conflicting with the films and the shows or anything else because it's basically a universe onto itself. Furthermore, those making the shows and movies then also don't have to worry about what the books and comics are doing and try to align with them. Not that they really do that anyway, but you get my point. You're not going to anger the fans who keep buying all the books and comics and reading them when a show does something that blatantly retcons them. And so yeah, when you really start thinking about it, if the EU took over for the new canon, at least when it comes to the new books and comics, not only are you going to make the old EU fans happy, and let me just say that one of the worst decisions that Lucasfilm ever made was with their first action essentially after purchasing Lucasfilm, angering your most core fans, the EU fans who had been keeping up with everything for years when there was no other Star Wars. Anyway, not only are you going to maybe make those fans happy and see them start buying stuff again, but they might also be a bit more forgiving of the Disney canon, what's been done in the shows and movies that, well, in their opinion, wasn't as good as what was done in the EU in some or maybe most cases. You're also going to, in theory, shine even more light on the hundreds of EU books that already exist and that you're reprinting anyway, since they'll suddenly feel relevant again. You as a fan won't have to read a book only to realize that it's a story or character that's never going anywhere because it happened to come out shortly before the EU was cancelled and they never got to finish it. All this then might also improve sales of new canon material if it came out less frequently and again was more, shall we say, important or relevant when it comes to what is currently going on in the films and shows. People, I think, are going to be more forgiving of putting something that's borderline required reading in a book or comic if it doesn't happen all the time, if it happens sparingly, like once a year. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure plenty of authors who used to work in the EU would love to come back and to create in it once again, or to finish what they started. And I'm sure there are plenty more eager to start working in the EU if they only had the opportunity. Hell, I'd try my hand at writing an EU book right now if Lucasfilm wouldn't sue the pants off me. And so honestly here, and I don't just say this because I love and miss the EU, but to bring it back might just be a win-win scenario for Lucasfilm. It could be sort of an apology to longtime fans who used to love it. Not to mention the books and comics from it might sell better than ever considering there are certainly, or has been, at least from my point of view, an influx of new fans to the EU. That many have recently discovered it and are loving it. To go along with those who always have and have missed it since it's been gone. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Does it make sense for Lucasfilm to bring back the EU? And should the fans try to let them know just how much we'd appreciate that? Or of course, you can feel free to ask a question for a future lightning response video. Whatever you choose to do though, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.